All right, AMG Hobby Talk number 32. We are back. No technical difficulties this week. I had some last week, so we were able to get past that. However, I am back. No Sherry this week, so no Fearless Leader. However, we do have the Collector of the Scallops, Collector of the People. Steve, how are you? I'm pretty well this morning. Excellent. And we have Blair. Who's Blair? Blair, how are you? I'm great from my office that doesn't quite work well. I've been here for about a month. <laughs> they never let me out. No, they never let you out. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, I I know those feels. I have a live stream. We never let that guy out of his room either. So it, it's it's worked for me in the past. So you got to do what you got to do. But what we're going to do for this episode is since we don't have any particular product that we're going to focus on this time around, we're actually going to focus our attention a little bit talking about the trade night, talking about the card show that happened this past weekend. We'll chat on that a little bit. Uh, even though you know neither Brad nor Sherry are around here this time around, we'll uh, we'll still talk about their little Austin Matthews one of one pull uh, that they had on there. You know, like like I said, very convenient. The the, the, the wonderful box that came and it's like it's happens to have the good. Steve, did you like did you like tab them with like all right? This is the good one. Just slide it across the table. This is the one. Yeah, that's just the kind of people they are. They uh, they knew where it was and they went for it. So I don't know. Little, Luck of the Irish. Little rattled right now that yeah. that they got it. And it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, and it was a big one. It wasn't like uh, like I think the, the key. And we, I was, I was joking with Brad um, after they pulled that because I didn't get to watch it live, but I caught it very, very much shortly after. Uh, yeah. And one of the things that I thought was very funny about it, uh, you know, good on them for pulling it because the, the cup break was really brutal. So so the ultimate one was much better. Uh, but I will say it wasn't just getting a shield. It was it was getting specifically it was getting the Austin Matthews shield. So it was a really good name in addition to it being like a shield card is great. Great pull. But then being you know, obviously one of the better names that you're going to get out of it. That's that's even better. Considering I didn't know uh, they were opening a case uh, and then I just. Brad sent me the short little clip, and I heard him giggling like a little 10-year-old schoolboy when he oh, pulled it. So hmm. um, that was priceless to me compared to the actual card was yeah. uh, his, his giggles and excitement to pulling this and, you know, saying this never happens to me. And, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely – he he could have used that. He, he's a busy guy and works hard, so yeah, little a little enjoyment and happiness in his life. Probably wasn't a bad thing at that time because he's had a hectic schedule, and yeah, uh, this is kind of his way to blow off some steam. There you go. Well, we'll probably see it again down the road. So obviously, uh, what I'm doing is I'm sharing uh, the Instagram post there on the AMG on the AMG Sports Cards Instagram, where it shows the clip of them pulling it. You can check out the card itself. I'm just I paused it right on the card itself, so you can check it out if you want. And then uh, on the channel, you've got two versions. So you got the short version if you want to skip straight ahead to the hit. If you want to check out the rest of the case to see what else they actually pulled as part of the case, there is also the longer version on it. They put it out at almost exactly the same time, which is like I would have loved to have separated the two out a little bit. That's my personal preference. But, you know, pro tip for the content folks, if you get a big hit, you know, milk it a little bit. You know, put in the first video and then milk it a little bit before you, before you give away the big hit. But anyway, both of them are on the channel. You can check out either one, so they're all there. And then, as I said, on the Instagram page, which I'll include a link to here in the description directly to this post, you can check out the specific hit if you're curious and you want to go straight to it. Obviously, a big pump pull. Shield card is great. But then Austin Matthews being a great name on top of it, that's even better. It'll be interesting to see what he does with it. Um, for now, it's going in his personal collection because he is a, a serious collector. Um, but it's not necessarily something, uh, just talking to him briefly, um, he'd be open, you know, to use it for trade for something that he wants. Uh, I know he's a big Tiger Woods fan. So, uh, you know, whether it's a, a rare Tiger Woods piece or something like that, but uh, s people have reached out to him already about the card, but right now he's just kind of uh, enjoying the moment. And uh, I think he puts it under his pillow every night uh, when he goes to bed. Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. Gary, yeah. Gary stole right. me. Yeah. That's that's true. He sleeps. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. It was uh, no, like Steve said though. I think it was great for him because uh, he does have quite a busy schedule, and uh, it just showed the true collector. He he is a collector, so uh, he's always been so enjoys cards and so. Yeah, and you can tell he wasn't thinking money when he opened that card. No, absolutely. He, not. he was thinking enjoyment. Yeah, and uh, and the thrill of you know pulling a card yeah. like that um yeah just the you could just hear it in his like again his yeah. little 10 year old voice um yeah. chris
morning when he pulled it. So, um, yeah. he, you know, and, and obviously he still has the card. So he's, he just liked to use it at some point, uh, enjoy it for a while and, uh, you know, use it to, to add something to his personal collection. That's near and dear to his heart. And some of the things he collects too, really don't have much monetary value. You look at it and, you know, what means nothing to some look you don't have, look you don't have to bring up the Alec Manoa thing I already do plenty exactly. of times like but the, 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 look Steve it's you know the, don't don't keep beating the horse it's already dead like you know it's in it's glue at this point like what are we doing well, yeah, now, now, I will do that on my time but that's a different conversation just thought I would bring that up you know yeah well, love you Brad good. love you Brad let's I, although I will say Alec Manoa has at least had a couple performances so hey hey he might he might be able to get back like five percent. At this point, like it might be up to five or six percent of what, what it was. <laughs> a little dangerous. Just but if you but if you want to support, uh, you know, you can support AMG Collectibles. I put the little scrolling ticker across the bottom of the screen. So you may want to support. And again, check out the videos, check out the social medias, check out a lot of those things and uh, help you know show some love, send some good vibes. So uh, obviously the, the break worked out well. To Steve's point, it was a lot of fun kind of seeing the reaction. It was very good. And uh, obviously, I think they had a lot of fun with it. And it worked, like I said, it worked out very well. That break was a very good one. It was a good contrast to the other one. So you got a chance to see the, the victory and the agony of defeat and the thrill of victory. So you've got now, now you've gotten both versions of it, which is, uh, which is pretty good. Now, a couple of things we want to touch on. I was just scanning through to see if there were a couple of comments. There were some great comments on it, but a lot of it was just kind of uh, generally talking through a lot of the hits and everything. So thank you to everybody who po posted comments on the videos. So appreciate mm -hmm. that. There wasn't anything specific as far as questions are concerned, though. So I'll kind of leave it be and I'll direct folks to check it out so they can see for themselves. One thing, though, I will touch on is obviously we also this past weekend, since we missed a week, we, we missed out on the chance to talk about this ahead of time. But we had mentioned that there was going to be the trade night and there was going to be the card show. And that happened this past weekend. So first, trade night. Can you guys tell me a little bit about how trade night went down? Anything that caught your eye or that you saw? Do you want to handle that, Blair? Yeah, oh, sure. I was here, so I think I can. Um, yeah, it was our typical. I thought we had a little bit of a slow night. I was a little late getting back. Uh, not late, but anyway, 5.30 or so. But I walked in. I was like, oh, this is a modest kind of crowd but there were still people around and uh but then it filled in um and uh you know we had a pretty good turnout i think again it was around the new pokemon release so i think it was pokemon heavy uh the usual culprits were in town though because of the show on saturday so uh you know some guys up from uh doug was up from uh, cape breton and and you know a few of those guys so uh it was nice to see them and um yeah, it was overall good, I think. Um, it moved some Pokemon. Yeah, and we're at that uh, you know time of year where the weather's kind of changing over to yeah. Friday was actually a beautiful day, and uh, so we were kind of wondering how things would turn out. But uh, yeah. and it usually gets a little bit lighter heading into summer as well. But mm -hmm. people just kind of filtered in, and it was yeah. it was successful. They're they're always successful, and uh, especially there was a few. Uh, a few people from out of town that you know come to the trade night, spend the night, and head into the show uh, the yeah. next day. And speaking of the show, I actually hadn't been to the new uh, facility because I always come in on Saturdays and open. So uh, mm -hmm. Brad was out of town, so I had to. Um, I was able to go in and uh, sweat and help put the set the tables mm -hmm. up. So a whole new appreciation for uh, the people that uh, set up the show, but uh, the facilities actually fantastic it's uh you know and where the old facility we used was great too but this one's just uh yeah. it's a perfect setup for a card show with perfect perfect lighting good parking good location um and then of course saturday morning i i rolled in for the first hour or so as well and um for a summer you know coming in the summer show um it was a great turnout especially we had like five or six of our uh our larger dealers, you know, went to Montreal. There's a show in Montreal over the weekend, so they they tend to head up there. But uh, several new people joined their took their spots basically, and I think the uh, attendance was about the same, uh, including the number of tables. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was it was a successful weekend. Very nice, very nice. I think it's always kind of interesting. Uh, to your point, the summertime is interesting for card shows because it's it's a double edged sword. On the one end, it is easier to get to a lot of places, which is nice. But on the other hand, a lot of people do get out of the way. 
Now, this is something I actually hadn't asked you guys, and maybe it kind of plays into it as well. Uh, it's a little bit separate from the conversation, but also related. Uh, I know uh, in Southern Ontario, whereabouts I am, one of the big things is cottage country. As soon as the weather gets nice, people go out to the cottages. You know, they head out to their little place because they, they got to get away from it all by by being basic, especially people in the suburbs, Steve. If someone's in the suburbs and they tell me I get away from it all, I just got to shake my head. I go, you're in the suburbs already. So like, what are we even talking about? Basically, you just want to go in the middle of nowhere and be near a lake somewhere. But that's basically all you're shooting. Yeah. And then for your trouble, you get to spend hours in traffic very slowly getting to said lake so that traveling both ways. By the time you get back, you probably spend 27 minutes there and then you'd be traveling back and forth. So I'm sitting there like this. This is a waste of time. Um, <laughs> but mind you, I'm not a cottage guy. But um, Nova Scotia wise, is it, is it is it does it have its own version of that? You know, kind of. But again, given the nature oh, yeah. of Nova Scotia. So what's cottage country then? What's, what's the what's the uh, drive one? drive five miles and you'll find a cottage pretty much. Yeah. But, uh, That's kind of what yeah. I figured. Yeah, it's not very yeah, far. Whether you're it? heading eastern or western shore, north right. shore, right. Uh, right. there's cottage country everywhere. And then of course you got uh, you know New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island and yeah, a lot of places to get away to. But yeah, and you know in this in the summer months, uh, which is something we, we're kind of used to and prepare for. Uh, yes, business does slow a little because people mm -hmm. allocate money to, uh, to other things. Yeah. Um, so we kind of prepare for that, uh, you know, whether it's maybe we, you know, cut a, a few hours here and there from whether it's me or Blair, you know, because we almost always have two to three people here. Now we're kind of like ah, passively say, oh, I want you to come in an hour later, two hours yeah. later, or Blair, don't come in at all, you know, but or but, just uh, stay in your office yeah just stay in the <laughs> office but yeah you just kind of work around it and uh you know and we'll there is a, a few good summer releases so um you know we, oh, yeah. we base uh things around that but we might step up whether it's our ebay presence um you know might try to get to a show or two more uh hopefully buy stuff it's a, a lot of times it's a good time to buy um you know customers are in the same boat as i us they might uh slow down a little bit so they could uh you know pull out a few cards that uh to give them a little play money to to put a tank of gas in and head to the cottage somewhere so we yeah you just have to find a happy medium uh in the summer months yeah i think that's fair uh, that's why that's why i wanted to kind of assuage my curiosity on that a little bit but to your point it is always going to be a factor that's part of it that's why it's going to be interesting for me something i'm going to be observing down my neck of the woods because of what i just said is that I do know that some of the uh, local promoters are going to be running some shows during the summer. And that's one of the things we talked about is that there's going to be a little slowdown to it. And we'll, we'll get, make sure everybody knows the schedule of anything going when the next one's going to be and all that. So they'll know well in advance and we'll have all that ahead of time. But mm -hmm. I know down here, it is interesting because well, we have so many people here anyway. So even, even the people that want to go to cars, there are still people around, but I'll still be interested to see how the traffic is affected by the by the weather and being warmer and people going out and doing those other things because there's so many things you can be doing once the weather gets a little more agreeable so we'll definitely have to see how that one plays out uh so one more thing then before we uh, move from here from this uh, situation here is to your point you got a chance to visit the new facility you liked it so that was a good uh, configuration and everything um in terms of the actual dealers and everything did, was it consistent with the last couple of shows around the same amount of dealers is it still kind of the same crew or is there any rotation at all yeah. No, I think um, it was, uh, I still think we set up about 130 tables from what I got okay. from Doug. So uh, that was as much as the last show, not as much as, say, the first one. I think we had more, but um, like Steve said, there was a few of the no noticeable, uh, you know, regular guys had, had gone to Montreal, but a uh, few new people took their spots and uh, it was a full room. Um, and it was a mix of stuff. I, I still found some vintage stuff to look at a couple of the usual culprits were there with their stuff and uh and then um heavy on tcg too like there was mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of pokemon and some of the some of the usual people and then some of the new guys and i see some customers of ours that were there kind of set up uh you know like steve said maybe moving some stuff to free up some cash and and uh or to buy different things so it was uh it was a good show and a good turnout yeah yeah, the little trend I'm just noticing uh, from, you know, from the couple of years I've been, you know, going into the summer uh, and not knowing as much about TCG. I do find TCG, you know, stays pretty steady no matter what time of season, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know, football might 
quiet down around now yeah. or basketball as the season's over. So um, even though it's always good, I definitely can see some seasonal trends with the, uh, with the major sports where, uh, you know, TCG, there's not necessarily a season. So, uh, you know, that's something that keeps us going in the quieter months too, because we, we know we have those TCG uh, customers and collectors mm-hmm. coming in. So that's just something I've noticed, yeah. um, you know, the last couple summers is that usually stays steady. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's uh, look. Uh, I one of the one of the memes from the from the pandemic period was folks as things were booming and p- things were going crazy. Uh, there were the, there were the jokes about you know Charizard can't tear an ACL, which is appropriate given Ronald Acuna and you know mm-hmm. ACL the ACL tear. But what's what is true, meme and joke aside, is that to your point, uh, Pokemon and you know Magic and all those LTCGs, there is no off season. So if there's no off season, like what seasonal thing can there be? It's just what products are out and whether people are interested in it or not. They produce a good product. It's pretty. It can be pretty good pretty much year round because there's no off season for that. People can just enjoy it whenever it's available. Yep. Sounds good. And um, one other thing that we'll touch on then, and I'll kind of share a couple of cards and items that did come in the shop. And we've got a nice variety of things. I actually didn't specifically put in any order this time around, so we'll have a little bit of fun with it kind of going in the order that it ended up on here. And we'll go with it. But definitely some folks, the things that folks can check out. I will encourage folks. As I said, for this episode, we're mostly going to just chat a little bit and then I'll show some cards. But again, if there is any questions or any interest about anything that's in the store currently or that will be coming in the store, I do recommend reaching out to the folks in the store. Use the contact points in the description. Use the contact points in the scrolling ticker. That's the best way to get a quicker response. However, if you want to leave a comment in the video, you certainly can. And we'll try to address it in the subsequent episode. Something you can keep in mind. All right, so let's get into it here, and what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the very top, and Mm -hmm. I'll share some items, and we can uh, comment on them kind of as we go. So for the items that came in the shop here, let's start here at the very top with a Marc-Andre Fleury Premier Swatches with a nice-looking swatch piece here, number to five. It's a pretty good-looking example here. Uh, Anything in particular that I need to know about, Steve, other than obviously what I can see on the screen here? No, uh, Fleury's kind of like Crosby, just where he's got the ties to – Cape Breton, uh, I guess, are they still called the Screaming Eagles? Uh, The major junior team, of course, he spent quite a bit of time uh, in Nova Scotia. So he's kind of like, you know, our local guys, always popular. So um, anytime I can get, whether it's a Fleury or Marshawn, Crosby, McKinnon, any of those guys, you you go for it. Even if you pay a little bit more, because most of the local customers, uh, you know, understand how popular he is and, uh, you know, I think that's already gone, actually. It, did, it didn't last long because it is a nice-looking patch. It is. Yeah, yeah well, well, from what I can see here, it looks like – I'll call it four-color because yeah, yeah. I think you've got the gray on the inside, you got the stitch, you got the gold, and you got the black. So really, you got kind of a four-color piece with a stitch down the center. And for the folks uh, listening to the audio, that's basically the description of it. So it's a four-color patch piece, decent-sized swatch, and it is uh, right now with the Golden Knights in this example. Fleury is interesting, though, career-wise, because he's played for a lot of teams. Considering a guy who's going to go to the Hall of Fame and everything, he's built up his uh, Hall of Fame resume, Stanley Cups. He's got the whole, you know, everything is filled out that you need, all the check boxes. Yeah. But he's played for a lot of th- teams, considering that, if you really think about it. And he probably could could have just stayed put at the end of the – I mean, he probably could have still been playing with Pittsburgh, but uh, wherever the goalie was that year had a good little playoff run, and I guess they Ooh. decided to make the move. But, but well, that really- was – he could have stayed where he was and had a great yeah. career too. Well, wasn't that Matt Murray? Yes. Matt Murray yeah. came in and of course, where's Matt Murray now? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I think but I, 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 remember back to the, I did did he win a cup though with Pittsburgh? Matt Murray actually was able to win. Well, that's when they made the change. Yeah, he got yeah. he got off there. Yeah. And uh they went with him. But I guess one year doesn't make a career. And no. uh Flurry Flurry's had a great career. Yes. The other thing I like about this card is I know we've mentioned it before, but sometimes you get like, you know, Marc Andre Fleury in the Golden Knights and then a piece from, you know, wherever. But I like how this one's kind of matching and the, the gold on the card. And of course, number to five doesn't hurt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time harping on it, but our friends at Upper Deck, guys, with the solid borders, we got to come on. We got to mm. let, can, can we, can we, Little bit of QC here, guys. A little bit of QC. Yeah. Not gonna it's pick one on of, it. One of those things, too. That's why I mean I I almost never ever grade a thick card because it's just yeah. 
um, or a, a low numbered card too. I know people, you know, grade, 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 but not everything needs to be graded. Sometimes just appreciate the card for what it is. Yeah. And uh, still an attractive looking card. Yes, it's got touches on the corners, but there's only four more of them. So uh, That's right. enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, I think for the, for the player collector, it's not going to matter. I've collected plenty of uh, jerseys and things in my day and patch cards, and you kind of take it for what it is. But it, it's unfortunate you would like it to have that quality control a little bit to go along with it as well. But again, when the patch is of quality, people are still going to be interested. It's not going to change that fact. Yeah. Here's a personal favorite, personal favorite of mine, everybody's favorite, Mike Trout, who, who is injured again. <laughs> but this was in a PSA nine. It is his uh, tops 2011 tops update, you know, famous kind of flagship card for him. Uh, any other thought there, Steve? Well, I mean, just, you know, even in the last two years, uh, you know, this used to be an enormous card. Um, I can't, tens used to be, I don't know, is it 1500 to 2000? Um, I want to say it was over 2000. I think. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a good time to get one now. I mean, there is a lot of them, but um, I think a nine might be, you know, 400 ish now where you know 18 months ago it was probably over a thousand so uh you know it's an example of a card that uh if he's your guy um you know yeah. pick it up at relatively cheap but uh yeah his last several years unfortunately with with the injuries and that yeah. uh you know ha haven't helped but and then of course anaheim's uh not the best team in the league the last several years but uh yeah i, I like the card too it's simple and uh yeah. you know it's just your basic tops card with a great player on it there you go all right so here we got an ovechkin this is from the um it's the high gloss version of clear cut so i want to say 22 23 clear cut now by the way in case anybody's noticing i kind of cheated because you can still see through since it is clear cut you can actually see through and read backwards so if you read it backwards you can tell it's 22 23 clear cut but the point is it's got the upper deck design with an acetate, so a nice see-through looking card inside of basically a one touch with the sticker on top of it. And it's got the on-card autograph. And it's got the high gloss variant, so out of 10, which is nice. Uh, and Ovechkin, so a pretty cool looking card. It's got a nice autograph on there. And the whole acetate with an autograph is kind of neat. I'm kind of a fan with the, the setup and concept of it, so pretty good. Speaking of, since we talked about the Austin Matthews, you know, we talked about the shield card. Uh, that Brad has in his possession. Well, this one's the Black Diamond Gemography. And this one is one of three. So we've got that. This is a sticker auto on there for Austin Matthews. Uh, we've got a little gem that is, uh, yeah. you know, basically they put it as part of the Black Diamond setup. Um, uh, the mustache is still very questionable to me. Just not not into it. And this card, actually, a, a customer opened, I think it was Black Diamond. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, this is Black Diamond, too, but... Mm -hmm. uh, he got an Austin Matthews. It was a sticker autograph, and the sticker, like half the name was cut off it. So oh, okay. It was like a fifty percent autograph. So we actually uh, gave him the information, and he contacted Upper Deck, and they made good on it. And I, it's probably a better card because I think his one was it was either out of five or out of ten, and so mm -hmm. they replaced it with yeah. another three. So um, he was happy, and then of course I, I. Uh, Took it upon uh, myself to try to buy it for the store, so I was able to uh, to achieve that, and that's sitting in the showcase as we speak. Very nice, very nice. I like it. Sticking on the Austin Matthews theme, this is from 2016-2017 Ultimate Collection. So this is the VIP Signatures Achievements, Austin Matthews. So because it says Achievements, I remember 16-17 Ultimate. VIP Signatures is the subset here. Achievements is that... Is that part of the subset, or is there something else to it about this one? Honestly, I'm not even sure. It just must be uh, must be just another way to put an autograph on a card. But I, it's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty neat. Unless it well, has something it. on the back. Sometimes they include, you know, on this day or something in the back. That, you know, that'll be my homework after the show because it's in the uh, it's in the featured showcase in the store. So I will uh, do my due diligence and report back to you. Yeah, that's the only reason I was wondering is because they do have different subsets in it, which is fine. And it could yeah. just very well just be a regular subset piece. Uh, let's just see, VIP signatures. So just as we're talking, I'm just quickly looking it up. Don't see that. VIP. I'll see if I can find anything. Uh, but yeah, when I saw the achievements piece, I was just wondering yeah. if it was themed or if there was something else to it. 
but regardless, it's got the uh, silver paint pen on there. Oh, and by the way, one other thing that I'll mention, actually. this It's funny since we got the two back-to-back, -back, right? This is 1617. I, I want you to look at the autograph here, and then I want you to look at the autograph here. Hmm. A little bit of variation between the two, which, by the way, is normal. Uh, but it is kind of funny just to see the difference between the newer version of it. I, I think it's the mustache. I think the mustache is what uh, changed yeah. the whole thing. It's a completely different first, thing. Uh, He's, yeah. First one, I saw the card, I thought Steve penciled it in there. Yeah. So the mustache just changes his equilibrium a little bit. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a little more difficult to sign. I can only assume. I can only assume. Moving on here, we've got a 78 tops rookie shortstop. So Paul Molitor, rookie. It's also got Alan Trammell on it. I think it might be rookie for both of them. Uh, yep. So you got Molitor and Trammell. Uh, you also got Washington and Klutz. Less exciting. Trammell and, the, and Paul Molitor are the keys to this in a PSA 8. So a nice, solid copy. Yeah, and that's a tougher card. It's you know a high number, and and these were notorious for being off centered. So, um, it's and, you know, a couple of great players on that card too. So, yeah. uh, and I believe that sold right away as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, one thing I'll add just before I move on from this one is that um, obviously it is a classic card from the '78 top set. It's one of the key cards that you need as key rookie in that year in that set. Uh, I do love though that for the Paul Monitor, it looks very he, he looks very basically very shady with the grainy photo they ended up using for it. I always thought that was very funny. It's just that is, is there a grainier photo you guys could have got to include him in the little corner box? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've got one of my favorite subsets from the cup, emblem of yeah. endorsements. So I don't know the year for this one. The design, I think I've seen it, but it doesn't ring a bell off the top of my head. However, emblem of endorsement are all out of 15 dual patch card which is always great so you got game use memorabilia patch in this case multicolored pieces which is nice a little stitching on one and then a multicolor on the other and then an on-card autograph messier used to be a really tough autograph because he used to sign nothing uh yeah. he has signed more in recent years but this is a nice classic one where it's got him in his rangers garb looks like a rangers patch piece to go along with it and on card auto it's a nice pretty nice card overall mm -hmm. i forget the year too i know when i collected these patchy auto I, I had a joe sacking from that same year kind of a cool piece but i forget what year it is as well yeah there's a couple of the years that are very similar to it but uh I'll, we'll see but regardless i would say it's a very nice one if any of you do enjoy the cup and do like some of the subsets emblems endorsement has always been one of my favorite subsets uh from adano yeah. i've got almost a complete run the only one i'm missing is just the first year and i've got all the other years uh that he oh, was wow. included cool. in that set so, uh, so it's nice having a little mix to be able to see them all year after year and the changes in the design. Yeah. One, one thing that's pretty consistent with Emblems of Endorsement for the most part, and this one is a good example of that, they're very good about having enough white space so that the autograph is allowed to have its space to look nice and clean relative right. to the rest of the design of the card. And this one, they did a good job of balancing things out. And blue and a blue signature to go along with the blue jersey. Smart. Mm -hmm. Smart. Well played. Next, we got a leaf card here. So this is Magnificence, and we've got here a uh, Ronaldo card. Uh, so you've got a piece of the jersey, it looks like, with a little bit of lettering on there. So that's extra fancy mm -hmm. to go along with the autograph there. Yeah, nice looking card. I haven't seen this one. Yeah. It is very colorful. I will say it is a very busy design on this one, but I think the fact that he's wearing the white jersey on it, and again, it's got a nice piece there with a little bit of, looks like a little bit of layering there with the piece of the jersey and, I think it's Jersey. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like it is. And it's got a little bit of the lettering to go along with it. And then you've got the sticker auto on there. So pretty good combination. Not too bad. Not too bad. Great card. Don't like the player too much, but. Oh, not a Ronaldo fan. Look at you. Okay. We'll have to find out more about Blair's soccer preferences. We're learning things here. <laughs> I do have a couple. Okay, so, so this one here is interesting because this one, uh, on surface, you look at a 75, 75 Opeachy. So a little bit, so a little bit different. Uh, mm -hmm. And also a little bit of a tougher card. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. So we've got this as an SGC 6.5, which is pretty clean card, not too bad, especially with the full, you know, full color borders. These yeah. ones do tend to chip a lot. So this is a very condition sensitive piece. And if you know anything about Opeachy, it's kind of interesting, a little bit different in terms of uh, distribution. And by that, I mean, you know, predominantly Canadian, but also you've got the English and French on the back. And it is a lower print run card. Because Opeachy just was not printed in the same quantity, especially 70s, mid-70s Opeachy is a little bit tougher. And this is obviously is a very key card. For the George Brett fan who has everything, the Opeachy is a little tougher one to come by. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that was one of our Toronto buys. And I mean, just, 
you know, like you said, much shorter print run. And, you know, when only one Opeachy baseball card shows up at our table, um, yeah. that's kind of an example of, you know, yes, very limited print run, but it happened to be George Brett and it is a super tough card to get because of the uh, factors you mentioned touch off centered, but uh, still a nice clean card and, you know, a high end copy of this, uh, you know, pricing can get insane on it, but this is a nice, uh, you know, middle of the run grade and, you know, would uh, be a nice addition to someone's collection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the uh, 75 Opeachy was actually one of the early uh, vintage sets. It was one of my early exposures to vintage Opeachy because uh, there, there's a world out there. Uh, that's one at the end of the day, anybody can collect anything they want at any time. But I'll say there's a, there, this is a situation where some of the advanced collectors who maybe put together the regular set already if they happen to like 75, they'll get the 75. Maybe they'll go after the 75 mini because you got the mini version as well. But then OPG is a is a different challenge to to basically chase after yeah. for a lot of folks, and it creates this kind of interesting situation because for some of the years the checklist is identical, and for some of the years the checklist is slightly modified. So it's something to bear in mind because uh, OPG created a little bit of a different challenge for the vintage collector. But a very nice card to finish up on. So we got a nice mix. We got a little bit of the new, a little bit of the old. We threw in a soccer card in there. We threw in some vintage. We got a little bit of everything in there, which is always solid. Very nice stuff. Perfect. So I think that uh, works out quite well as far as an episode. So I think we managed to we, – we took care of it, guys. Good job. Blair, good job by you. In the office, you managed you managed to carry your end of it from the office. We're still not letting you out, but the point is you at least did your job today. I think we need to get a little bit of paint there, Blair, to your left on the wall. What are you doing? Do you yeah, I don't know. I think it's, back? I think it's <laughs> the angle doing? I have the chair on. I might be getting a little uh, – those times where I feel like I want to get out and I can't get out, I probably spin the chair a bit. Yeah, he's, he's, probably, he's probably slammed that chair, the edge of the chair into that wall a couple of times. It's, that's what's going on over there. You can, yeah. you know, it's basically what we can – we're seeing what's going on. The, there. We got it. If the golf cards would cover it up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll come up with something for next week. There you go. I love it. Perfect. So remember the things I said earlier. We do love the engagement. So if you want to leave some comments in there or if you have any questions that uh, you maybe you'd like us to touch on or address in a future episode, feel free to do so. We will keep you posted on some of the other shows and trade nights as they come up. Obviously, the summer schedule, as things get updated and adapted, we will keep you posted on that. Also, follow the social medias. If you want updates on things as they come, Social media is the best way to keep an eye on that. And again, if you need an answer to something quicker, reach out to the folks at the store. That is the best way to check out what's in the store, what's available, you know, what's what's going on as far as events and things. Reach out because that'll be the quickest way for the team to be able to tell you what's going on and what your options are and what's you can pick up while you're there. So for myself, Collector of the Scalps, Collector of the People, and Blair, this is episode 32. We thank you for checking this one out. Also hit the like button because we're working towards that 300 subscribers. So let's keep doing that. And also feel free to keep leaving in comments on the Brad and Sherry's a big poll. You know, congratulate them on the Austin Matthews poll. There you go. Big time. May as well. Milk it for all it's worth, people. Milk it for all it's worth. So that's it for us this time around. Thanks very much. And we'll catch you in the next one.